Hello guys, namaste and welcome to this video tutorial on how to calculate, how to determine the SPI index from the precipitation data values for the given study period. Well, the requirements for this project are three things. Firstly, you will need our studio installed in the computer. If you do not have that, then I have kept the links for a video in the description below on how to install our studio in your computer and it's a very simple and easy process guys do check it out if you need it and if you already have it installed then that's great secondly you need monthly average precipitation data values for the study period you are trying to study so if you have that then that's great usually you'll get it in this format the daily average values format year month and these are the precipitation values now you'll initially get those rainfall data in daily precipitation daily average values you'll need to convert those data into monthly average values something like this year month and precipitation data so if you so that's all great the third requirement is my excel file i have kept the links in the description for this excel file that i am using right now for making this video so if you want to follow along and tag along then just download that file and follow the steps accordingly and this file could be useful for your project as well so if you need it then you can use it now let's move Let's first go for the R Studio. So open open up your R Studio application, and you'll encounter an interface like this. Just uh, go to New, go to File, go to New, go to R Script. Just open up a new tab, and if your console part, this part is filled with stuff, then just go to Edit and Clear Console for now. If your this part is uh, filled with stuff, go to this Broom option and clear everything out. And so on. After our studio is installed and you have uh, is open and you have created a new file, firstly you need to install a package. Now that package is called SPEI package. So before you install it, go to packages over here and check if you already have it installed. Because if you already have it, then you do not need to. And you can see nothing is over here. So I'll go to this console part and type in install. Packets hit in the quotation mark, don't miss it guys, and type in capital S, capital P, capital E, capital I, and that is done. Uh, okay, it'll take a few seconds, and I think I'll need to type that. And wait, do it. Yes, it's not need to do anything. While that is being done, okay, it's been installed, good. Now, that's great. Just uh, leave a tick mark over here so that the package will be ready to be used. Now, 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 go to your Excel file. Go to your Excel file and go for the monthly average values. So initially, you'll be getting daily average values in this format. So just in order to convert those values into monthly average values, select all the data and go to insert go to pivot table okay and simply put a tick mark into year and month we do not need the daily values so no more day and click on this prcp as well these are the daily values but we'll convert those into monthly values now in the rows quadrant of a year you need to drag in year and month so you're seeing here you need to drag over here in the values column values quadrant now Initially, it's count of PRCP and that is not what we need. So go to value field settings and change that to average. So, okay. And it's been converted to average values. Now, this basically what you're looking here is for the year 1980 and the first month, the month of January, for the month of February, for the month of March and so on. For the month of January, the average monthly value for precipitation is 13.23. Yes. And accordingly. Now, all you need to do is copy this drag it from right over here guys do not go do not put your cursor over here do not put it over here just put it in the middle of this line and drag it all the way oh, oops. drag it all the way to 12 
Now control C, copy this and if you have downloaded my Excel file then go to the first sheet, the data sheet over here and paste it right over here. Do not do control V guys, just do right click and paste only the values because if you do control V you'll get something like Just do control C and uh, just paste not over here, paste it over here. Control V. Yes, you get that is how you get the monthly average precipitation values, guys. If your study period is different, yes, it'll definitely be different. Then just uh, follow the steps, similar steps accordingly. After that has been done, just save this Excel file. Remember, guys, you'll need it in year month and monthly average precipitation values format nothing else no other extra columns no nothing else uh, the heading should be year month and this anything well after that is done save the file go to our studio and import yes sorry go to this environment tab over here something like this yes environment tab over here import data set go for so browse and go to exactly where you have saved the file initially so over here project S. open that up it'll take a few seconds and after that is done you'll get something like this your data could be different well the column headings should be almost the same import that and it'll appear right over here after that has been done, now you can find out the SPI indices. Now, how do we do that? So, uh, initially I'll start with SPI3. SPI3 basically means, for me, it's 3 month SPI value. If you want to find out the first month SPI value, or 1 month SPI value, you can just go for SPI1. I'll be finding out SPI3 first. So, type in SPI3, type in this symbol, type in this symbol. After that, oh, well, this is a basically a symbol which assigns a certain value, certain stuff to this variable. SPI3 here is my variable name, guys. Yours could be different. You can keep any name. Oh, no, note that it should be easy. SPI3 and all that stuff, I'll type in SPI, and this is a function which is available in the SPEI package. So, uh, SPI open up the brackets and type in the file name guys my file name will appear over here project SPI capital P capital S capital P capital I so I'll type in that after that hit in the dollar symbol shift 4 and you get dollar and after that click on TRCP what this basically does is uses the SPI function for this particular column, PRCP column of the file project SPI. That is the comma and my time scale. My time period is three months, so I'll hit in three year. If your time period is one month, then hit in one. If your time period is four months, hit in four and accordingly. And enter. After that is done. Um, sorry. What just happened here? contain NAS oh sorry guys oops 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 something happened well if your data oh something like this something like this if your data is filled with NAs or empty spaces then that is not allowed guys so uh, you need to fill in these empty spaces wrong stuff values guys uh, not fill your <laughs> empty spaces in this format board excel mm, spi 
I open up, open up, open up, open up, and yes, there you go, and <laughs> repeat the same process. Sorry for the inconvenience, guys. Well, got to learn something new today. Project, uh, it's in the dollar sign PRC. Well, PRCP here basically is the column heading name, guys. If your column heading has a different name, then type in that name accordingly. Uh, three and enter yes that's looking good nothing else appears now type in spi3 and enter and you get your spi x values good great now if you're using my excel file guys just copy all these values oh, yes right from right over here do not start from over here just copy it from right over here and control Go to project file, go to SPI3 tab and paste it right over here. Initially all these spaces look empty guys. Are you looking at this? Yes. Paste it over there. Go to do not click anywhere else after that. Go to data. Go to text to columns. Go to next, next, finish. And automatically the data are filled. Well that is a benefit you'll get if you use my Excel file guys. Also, do remember guys, do remember one thing, if you're using my file, then you'll need your data arranged in six months in a row format. You can see here January, February, March, April, May, June. Do not uh, use the data, do not use my Excel file if July appears over here. It should be six months in one row and the next six months in another row. For example, so sometimes if your screen is a little too big, suppose for... It's, like this then if I hit in SPI3 then yes this might happen see you're seeing one two three four five six seven eight months in a row so if you're using my excel file then this is not preferable guys so you'll need to copy the data only if it's in six months in a row format so in order to do that just adjust this portion now it's in one two three four five months format and that is not acceptable as well so spi3 yeah it should be in six months format after that is done just copy it and paste it here automatically everything gets filled after the spi3 tab is done you can just go to this prcp file and it's the main sheet guys see automatically this column gets filled and the chart is automatically generated similarly for spi4 you repeat the same process type in spi4 assign symbol and spi type in the project name ROG dollar symbol comma s sorry comma four because four is my time scale for now. Uh, e. <laughs> I'm making a lot of mistakes in this video, guys. Sorry, I forgot to hit in PRCP. Or file name could be different as well. That is done. It'll appear here. Just type in SPI4 and enter, and the SPI4 values are generated. Again, copy it from right over here. Right over. What happened? Right over here. Control C and paste it in the SPI4 tab. E. Yes, after that is done, go to data, go to text to columns, next, next, finish. And it should appear something like this, guys. If there are certain errors over here, then you repeat the process. After that is done, go to the main sheet and see this column, which is initially empty, gets filled as well, and the second chart is also generated. Good. Well, that's uh, repeat the similar process for SPI 6, SPI 9, SPI 12, and you will get something like this at the end. All these columns will be automatically filled, and these charts will be automatically generated. Well, you can 
use a similar process in your own Excel format. Well, if you are using my Excel file, then you'll need to mind a few things, guys. Initially, my study period starts from 1980. So, if your study period starts from something else, then do change these data accordingly. And so on. And the next thing you'll need to mind is I'm using HLOOKUP function over here. So, just in case your study period doesn't match with mine, and mm, uh, these these all data could get a little messed up in that case so i hope you can fix those stuff yourself and thirdly 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 yes next thing you can simply generate the charts that we generated here in excel these charts in our studio directly well for that you can simply type in plot.spe Type in the variable name for SPI3 chart, type in SPI3 for SPI4 chart, type in SPI4. If you have assigned a different variable name, type in that particular variable name. And it'll generate the chart. Yes, looking good, right? Well, the disadvantage of generating this chart in our studio is that the chart title and these uh, labels and all are a little hard to edit. So. I prefer using my Excel file because these headings and titles are easily editable. So that's it guys. If you want to use the RStudio generated chart, then simply export this and save as PDF. Select in particular directory and just type in SPI3 or whatever you want to give a name to it. Save and it's done. Well, that's all guys and thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, do comment. Leave a comment, do like, subscribe and thank you for watching.